to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Genesis chapter 2, verse number 24. We welcome you today to our study of the truth about marriage. Today we're considering what God says can make a great marriage. And what is marriage? And as we think about the subject of marriage, we'll also consider what God says on the subject of divorce. And so we're glad that you've joined us for our Bible study today. Glad that you've tuned into our broadcast. We want to encourage you, if you don't have your Bible with you, to locate that, have it ready, as we're going to look to the Word of God on this very important subject. Today's lesson is being brought to you by members of the Churches of Christ and congregations of the Lord's Church as well. We'd love for you to stop by and visit the Lord's Church in your area, whether it be on their Sunday worship or for Wednesday Bible study. We want to encourage you to stop by and check out the Lord's Church in your area. You'll find a group of people there who want to serve God to the best of their ability, who love the Bible, who are concerned about lost souls, and who are friendly and kind to those who may be visiting. If you've got a Bible question, you'd like to learn more about the church, or the plan of salvation, or how Christians worship, then be happy to sit down and open up the Word of God with you and study together. Friend, we also want you to know that here at the Gospel of Christ, our main goal is simply to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. That world begins with you, and we want to help you in any way we can in your study of God and His Word. We have a wide variety of good Bible study materials, and they're all available free of charge. We have over 500 lessons, every book of the Old Testament, every book of the New Testament, a wide variety of topical lessons available, and we'd love to make those available to you free of charge. Just visit our website, thegospelofchrist.com. From there, you can fill out a media request form, and if you'd like to have those immediately as a digital download, we can get those to you that way, or if you need a hard copy on DVD or a CD, you can fill that out on the request form, or you can email us or write to us or call us, and we'll be glad to help you in that endeavor also. And friend, in our fast-paced world where everybody's got a smartphone, we want to encourage you to check out the Gospel of Christ app. It's available both for Apple and Android phones from the respective Play stores, and we hope that you'll check that out. It's a great way to study the Word of God on the go in such a fast-paced day and age today. As we think about the subject of marriage, this is indeed a very important and very needed lesson. We live in a day and age where marriage is oftentimes on the rocks. Marriages can be in shambles. There is a lot of divorce in our land uh, today. And even more nowadays, more people are living together because they don't want to have to go through the fear of marriage and divorce and possibly the breakup. But what does the Bible teach on the subject of marriage? What can we do to make our marriages better? And what does God teach on the subject of divorce and remarriage as well? Let's consider what God wants us to understand about the purpose of marriage. You know, if we can understand what God's design for marriage is, if we can understand why God instituted marriage and what the divine purposes of it are, it'll help us be better equipped to meet those purposes and live our marriages in such a way that they bring God glory and help each other get to heaven. And so what's the purpose of marriage? All the way back to the beginning, Genesis chapter 2, verse number 18, the Bible says God saw that it was not good for man to be alone. Therefore, he made a helper comparable to him. Marriage is designed to provide needed 
companionship. No one likes to be alone mostly. Nobody wants to have to go through life by themselves. We, we need help in our challenges of life. We want somebody to rejoice with when the good times come. I am not created and you are not created to be isolated on an island somewhere and live like a hermit. That's not God. how God made man. God saw, originally, God saw when Adam was the only one, God recognized and knew it's not good for Adam to be alone. And thus He created a helper, Eve, comparable to him. If we're going to fulfill God's divine purpose on marriage, we need to be companions to one another. We need to help one another. We need to do what we can to encourage and uplift and, and to hold one another up and support each other through this life. That's the purpose of marriage is that we need somebody to lean on and to be a companion with in this life. We also learned that part of the purpose of marriage was to propagate the human race. Genesis chapter 1, verse number 28. God said to Adam and Eve, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth. It was through the relationship of marriage and in the home that the families created. Genesis 2, verse 24. And inside that family unit, one man, one woman for life, children are brought into it. And through that, the earth and humanity and population is also propagated. And so part of the purpose was for children and for the earth to be populated with God's people, with His creation. But then there's this purpose. Do we realize that God created a helper for us to help us in this life and ultimately to help us get to heaven? God saw that it was not good for man to be alone, thus He made a helper comparable to him. To help him with what? Well, a multiplicity of things. But ultimately, we ought to be able to help each other with the spiritual goal of living with God forever in heaven. It is a blessing to find somebody who loves the Lord, somebody who wants to serve God, someone who will encourage, uplift, hold us accountable, and help us to make it toward that lofty goal of getting to heaven itself. And so when we think about God creating a helper for us, let's also realize that person's a helper in the spiritual sense, to encourage and uplift one another in this life and to help each other get to heaven. In fact, when you date somebody and when you're thinking about marrying somebody, you know what one of the first questions you ought to ask is, will this person help me get to heaven? Will they help me to be a better Christian? Will they help me to grow in my knowledge of the Bible and to serve God better and to worship Him more faithfully? Or will they drag me down? Friend, if they're not going to help you as God designed, it's never going to fulfill His divine purpose. And of course, marriage was created to prevent immorality. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 teaches that very idea, and then to help us develop spiritually, husbands and wives ought to do that to help and encourage one another. And so first and foremost, if marriage is going to be what God wants it to be, realize the divine purpose of marriage. And then secondly, if your marriage is going to be great, you've got to let God and His Word, the Bible, be the standard. Friend, God must be the foundation of every marriage and every home. I want you to listen to Psalm 127, verse number 1. The Bible says this, Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Friend, we're not talking about two-by-fours. We're not talking about vinyl siding. We're not talking about asphalt shingles. What are we talking about unless the Lord builds the house? The home. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother, be joined to it. We're talking about the, the home unit. And unless God is the founder, unless God is the foundation of every marriage, it'll never be what God wants it to be. And so husbands and wives should make it their goal in life to help each other be more godly. We want to help each other develop the fruit of the Spirit. We want to help each other to study the Bible and to pray together and put God before one another and make sure 
that we're focused on seeking the kingdom first and doing everything we can to get to heaven and to ultimately bring God the glory and the honor. Friend, I want you to consider this also as it relates to God being the foundation of the home and the marriage. Let's realize God's Word must be the standard for living in the home. I love the words of Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. Joshua's farewell address, he knows he's about to die, and he wants to leave something on the heart and mind of Israel, and he says to them, you, do, you need to serve God, you need to follow Him, you need to do His will, but he makes this great statement, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Friend, that's how we want to approach our homes as well. This house, this home, this marriage, we're going to let God and His divine Word be the standard for living, which means this. Matters in the home have got to be decided by the Word of God. When it relates to moral decisions, when it relates to conduct and behavior, when it relates to questions of should we participate in this action, should we do these things? How do we solve or address this problem that's going on in our home or family right now? What we need to do is sit down, open the Bible, and let husbands and wives and families see what God has to say. Jeremiah 37, verse number 17, ask, Is there any word from the Lord? Romans 4, verse 3, What does the Scripture say? And we need the mindset of Jesus' mother in John 2, verse 5, when she said to the servants, Whatever He, Jesus, says to you, do it. You see, we need to be accountable, and we need to help our husbands and wives, our families, live up to the Word of God. Parents, you need to do your best to help your children do what's right, teach them the Bible, help them to know God and His divine will, and live in such a way that the Bible is leading your home and your family. And so on top of the fact that we realize the purpose of marriage and we understand that we need to help and encourage one another, let's also realize we've got to be committed to making marriage work. I believe sometimes part of the problem is we give up too easy. You see, there's commitment even all the way back to the beginning. There is commitment in marriage. Listen to Genesis 2.24. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother, be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. When we talk about commitment, what are we talking about? There's the commitment that when you create your home and your family, you are committed to leaving father and mother. Their home and their family are their home and their family. Your home and your family, that's your home and your family. They both try to live by the Word of God, but in matters of option and matters of expediency, everybody's not going to do things the same way. It will not benefit you if you say, this is the way mom and dad used to do it, or this is the way mom, or this is the way... Figure it out and be committed to leaving father and mother behind and having your own family unit based on the Word of God. There needs to be commitment to the permanency of marriage. Matthew 19 verse 9 says, or Matthew 19 verses 6 through 9, What God has joined together, let not man put asunder. God hates divorce. Malachi 2 verse 16. And so when we think about this idea, until death do us part. Romans 7, 1 through 4 teaches that that is exactly the case. Death does in marriage, but until that point, we need to make a commitment to the permanency of marriage, committed to fa leaving father and mother, committed to making it work, and committed to facing the problems of life together. You know, we say oftentimes, when a, a, a wedding ceremony occurs, we'll say the words, for better or for worse. Friend, do we really mean that? Are we committed to facing the problems of life together? You know, sometimes I think when you're young, you think everything's going to just somehow work out perfectly and there's never going to be any problems, that no difficulty is going to arise, and then life happens, right? What about when problems arise? What about when it's not easy? What about when it's an uphill battle? 
You need to be committed to facing the problems of life together. And of course, there needs to be a commitment to sharing and doing what we can to hold one another accountable to the Word of God. But here's such an important key. If marriage is going to work, you've got to be bound together by love. I want you to open your Bible to 1 Corinthians 13. We don't want to underestimate the value of our love for God and our love for one another, and that has to be what ties it all together. Look at 1 Corinthians 13, and I want you to see how important love is. Beginning in verse number 1, the Apostle Paul says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. Though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I, I have faith so that I can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Well, well Paul, what do you mean by love? Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Love is not puffed up. It does not behave rudely. It does not seek its own. It is not provoked. It thinks no evil. It does not rejoice in iniquity, iniquity but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. And now verse 13, and now abide faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Friend, if you really love one another, meaning that you're going to put others before yourself. It's not going to be about parading yourself around and promoting yourself and all about you. Selfishness cannot be a part of that. If you really love somebody, you want their best interest and you want them to go to heaven, your marriage can make it through the difficulties that we often find and face in this life. Well, those are some things then related to the idea of marriage what then does the Bible teach about the problem of divorce and remarriage? Sadly, marriages sometimes do uh, end in divorce. And while God doesn't want that to happen, friend, we want to see what God says on the subject of divorce and remarriage. Let's begin by recognizing this. Divorce is not a part of God's original paradigm. Genesis 2.24 his original plan, leave father and mother, be joined to your wife, the two shall become one flesh. That's God's pattern. One man, one woman coming together to create their own family unit and that being permanent. And so God's original plan, divorce is not in that. That's not what God wanted. That's not how He wanted it to be. But sometimes problems do arise. And in Deuteronomy 24, we see the first instance of that mentioned in the Bible. Look in Deuteronomy chapter 24, and I want you to see what was happening in the time of Israel and what Moses told the people here. And we'll tie that into the words of Jesus as well in Matthew chapter 19. Look in Deuteronomy chapter 24, and I want you to notice what the Bible says in verses 1 through 4. When a man takes a wife, and marries her, and it happens that she finds no favor in his eyes because he has found some uncleanness in her, and he writes her a certificate of divorce, puts it in her hand, and sends her out of his house. When she has departed from his house and goes and becomes another man's wife, if the latter husband detests her and writes her a certificate of divorce, puts it in her hand, and sends her out of his house, or if the latter husband dies who took her as his wife, then her former husband, who divorced her, must not take her back to be his wife after she's been defiled, for that is an abomination before the Lord, and you shall not bring sin on the land which the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance. It seems that as you study the context, and as we read what Jesus commented as well in Matthew 19, 9, they would say, why did Moses command? And Jesus said, wait a minute now, command might be a little strong in essence. Moses permitted because your hearts were already hard. This seems to be something that Israelites were practicing as it were. And God regulated that. 
But again, that was not a part of His divine will. And the idea of uncleanliness, many would say that would be for sexual immorality as is mentioned in Matthew 19. And so we see the original, uh, we see this occurring in Deuteronomy 24. But friend, let's again hear what God says. Malachi 2.16, God hates divorce. It, it creates violence and it's like bloodshed and it is a divorce is a violent, violent act. It rips the home apart. It hurts children and families, uh, children and families, and it does a great deal of violence and harm to society as a whole. Well, let's then think about what our Lord and Savior said on the subject of divorce. Would you open your Bible with me to Matthew chapter 19? As far as the New Testament teaching on divorce, Jesus was asked about it in Matthew chapter 19, and I want us to see what He here had to say. Matthew chapter 19. I want you to look with me beginning in verse number 1. The Bible says, Now it came to pass when Jesus had finished these sayings, that he departed from Galilee and that he departed from Galilee and came to the region of Judea beyond the Jordan and great multitudes followed him and he healed them there the pharisees also came to Jesus testing him and saying to him is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any reason Here's Jesus' answer. Jesus answered and said to them, Have you not read he who made them at the beginning, made them male and female, and said, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So then they're no longer two flesh but one. Therefore what God has joined together, let not man separate. And so they come to Jesus and they want to know for just any reason, if we can't get along, if she burns the toast, whatever. Can we just divorce? And Jesus, in essence, said, of course not. That wasn't God's original plan. When God joins it together, man ought not to separate that. Well, watch their question further in verse 7. They said to Jesus, Why then did Moses command to give her a certificate of divorce and put her away? Now Jesus said to them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, permitted you to divorce your wives. Watch this though. But from the beginning, it was not so. That is not God's original plan. You want to think Moses commanded it. Moses, because your heart was already hard and you were already doing it in essence, permitted, regulated that, but it was never God's original plan. Now listen to verse 9. And I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, except for sexual immorality, and marries another, commits adultery. And whoever marries her, who is divorced, commits adultery. Friend, are there 101 reasons for divorce? Can you just divorce if you want to and remarry at will? Does God? No. Jesus said, whoever divorces his wife, and here's the exception, except for fornication. That word fornication is the Greek word pornea, which literally means illicit sexual activity. Outside of sexual activity on the part of a partner, outside the bond of marriage, one is not permitted to divorce. Whoever divorces his wife except for fornication and marries another. If you divorce for unscriptural reasons and marry another person, you're committing adultery. And whoever marries that person who is divorced for unscriptural reasons also commits adultery. The only scriptural reason that we find in the Bible for divorce is fornication. And then and only then does the innocent party have the right to remarry. Well, someone says, well, uh, what if someone is in that situation and they, they didn't know that? Ezra chapter 10 verse 3. They had taken wives of the heathen nations. God had told them not to take them. Maybe they didn't know that. But God also told them to get rid of, to divorce their foreign wives, to separate themselves from them. And that was according to the commandment of God. And so if someone finds themselves in a relationship that's not right, you just can't continue in that scene. If I find myself in any activity that's not right, I can't just continue in that. Repentance means not only that I have to change my way of thinking, 
but I also have to change my way of acting. I can't live like that. You cannot live in adultery. Colossians 3 verse 7, these sins you once lived in. And one of those was adultery. Adultery is not something you can live in. You've got to amend your ways and change from that. Well, how can our marriages be better? Let's realize as part of Christ's teaching on marriage, we need to realize that marriage is honorable. The bed undefiled, whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Hebrews 13, verse number 4, marriage was designed to be an honorable, holy, right relationship between two people who have the right to marry and who make it their aim. To please God. And, and what happens, the relationship, uh, the relations between a man and a woman inside the marriage bond, that's good, that's right, that's holy, that's something that is given by God. But friend, as we suggested at the outset of the lesson, there's a lot of problems with divorce today. People think that just for any reason, if you just decide that you're incompatible, you can get a divorce and marry and remarry and that's going to be okay. Friend, you don't find that. You just don't find that in the Bible. It's a sin. It's contrary to God's will. And you can't continue to live in a sinful state and be right with Almighty God. And so we're glad you've joined us for our broadcast today. As always, we want to encourage you to visit the Lord's Church in your area. If you'd like to study more about the subject of marriage, know more about it, you'll find people there who love God and who'd be happy to talk to you about that. Friend, if you've never obeyed the gospel, here at the Gospel of Christ, we'd love to help and talk to you about that. If you, uh, do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? John chapter 8, verse 24. Unless you believe that I am He, Jesus said, you'll surely die in your sins. Would you be willing to not only believe in Him, but repent of sin? Luke 13, 3. Unless you repent, you'll all likewise perish. Would you confess the beautiful name of Jesus before men? Romans 10 verse 10, Matthew 10, 32 and 33, and to have every sin washed away. Would you be immersed in water for the forgiveness of your sins? Acts 2 verse 38. If you've never obeyed the gospel, we encourage you to do that. We'd love to talk to you more about that. Maybe there are struggles or difficulties that you're facing in your life. Maybe you've got problems related to marriage. Friend, Please, we encourage you to turn to God. Turn to His Word. Let's give our hearts to Him and let's do everything we can to make marriage the best it can be. We hope you'll join us next time as we study more about God's truth. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, streaming, free media, and Internet. Our motto is truly to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. This is the Gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844-6-GOSPEL. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the